this is Steve with Smitty's Flybox. Today we're going to tie a Blue Wing Olive Biot Nymph. So this is a small nymph using mostly natural materials. And I'm going to show you some techniques with the uh, Biots and the Hungarian Partridge. And so this would be a really good wintertime, springtime nymph, uh, even for a tag nymph if you're Euro nymphing. So. All right, what we're gonna do is start with a scud hook, size 18, and I'm using UTC 70. And we'll just attach our thread and build our thread base nice and tight right there to about halfway. All right, now the first thing we're going to do is tie in a tail. So I've just got a piece of a Hungarian partridge feather that I've been working with, and I'm just gonna peel off small little clump I don't worry too much about it being perfectly uh, lined up um, so we're just going to put a, a nice little nymph tail out the back we want the tail to be about the length of the hook shank so once I've got that I'll just hold those fibers and just roll those right up on top and then just hold your fingers there as you wrap down around the bend of the hook directly above the barb of the hook and we'll come right back to about halfway and that should give us a small little buggy tail out the back. We can snip some of this excess and tie that down as we go. Okay, so let's again return our thread just barely past halfway, somewhere in there. And that's where we're gonna attach our buyout. Now, if you have a turkey buyout feather, this is the underside of the feather. This is the top side. If you look down this side, this is where, um, we're going to use these because this is where you get the nice long biots that have the ridges. You can use this side of the feather as well. It won't be as clean or as neat. You won't get the stiffness in the uh, the ridges, but you can use that for smaller nymphs or whatever, or even for this nymph if you'd like. So there's a lot of biots on one of these feathers. And uh, I'm going to get myself just one of these nice long ones. And poke that off the side of the, uh, the buyout there, just like that. Now, if you look at this closely, this buyout, usually there's a dark edge. You may not be able to see it on camera. There's a little dark edge along this side. So I'll flip it over. Here's the dark edge, a little bit lighter or thinner edge, and there'll be a little notch along the, the lighter or thinner edge. I'm gonna tie this in and it's, not, it's a good idea to, to get it wet, so I like to have a little bit of water by my tying bench. And you can work with it a little better. I'm going to tie it in so that notch is facing, facing up and that dark edge is facing down. And really just kind of come in there. I don't want to try to tie it in by the very tip right there because uh, that, that has a tendency to break. So I'm going to come down somewhere right in there and just hold that as I tie that down. Again, right down to the base of our tail, about right there. So that should be laying somewhat right on top of our hook. All right, now let's just move our thread forward, tie down any of the butt sections there. This is where, if you have a little cradle on your vise, it's a little nice because we can get this thread out of the way right there. And I'll use the rotary feature. So I'm just gonna hold that by out right there and just wrap that cleanly around. If you don't have a rotary vise, that's fine. You'll just have to kind of carefully uh, wrap that around the hook as you go. Okay, so once I reach just about to the eye of the hook, now I'm gonna just hold that straight up in the air. Hold that with my right hand, drop my thread over with my left hand about three times. And now we have a pretty good segmented abdomen of this fly. We've tied down that tight biot. And we can move on to the thorax of the fly. So let's just tie down any excess and let's return our thread just about to the halfway point right there. All right, now I'm, I've got a little piece of thin skin like that. And it should be angled up once I remove it from the paper. And I've cut it fairly thin, about, I would say, a little about, about the same width as the eye of the hook. And let's just position that right on top. 
make a few good wraps there and position that again at the halfway point so it's sticking straight up. And now we can add a small amount of dubbing to build up that thorax. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little dubbing to this thread. build up a little thorax a little fuzziness right there like that now if you're if your hook eye is straight down sometimes I like to reposition my hook in the vise and tilt it up so my thread won't slip off all right now we're gonna take some uh, we're gonna make some legs so what I have is just another Hungarian par partridge feather and you notice I've just snipped out the the tip there and that way I can come in here and, and position these for the legs. And let's just peel back what, I, what I'm not gonna use for this fly. So come in there about like, that's about the right amount. Like that. I'm almost got like a claw looking thing. And I'm gonna position those. I want those tips to extend just past the wing case or the halfway point so once i have that i'll just capture it right there and then i can just come around and tie that off and then we can snip off our excess we might have a little bit there hanging out the front that we need to uh work with all right so now you should have both on uh equal march parts on each side I'm just gonna make a few wraps just to get those splayed out. Now when we bring our wing case through, it'll help position those legs how we like them. All right, so I'm just gonna hold that with my right hand. And again, firmly uh, make a few wraps there with my left hand. And now we can snip off the thin skin. Now we might have a little bit of junk there, so let's just pull those legs back out of the way and clean up that head best we can. Okay, we'll do our okay, give ourselves a little spot for a whip finish and a little head cement. And uh, little guy can be a workhorse for picky trout.